the Royal Navy has taken one of the biggest leaps in modern history. On the 20th of November 2025, the Ministry of Defence signed a £316 million contract with MBDA UK to bring the Dragonfire laser-directed energy weapon into frontline service. For years, Dragonfire looked like something from the distant future, an impressive lab project wheeled out for trials and demonstrations. But now the future has arrived early. The system is no longer a prototype, it's a funded capability, and the first operational unit will be fitted to a Type 45 destroyer by 2027, about five years ahead of its original plan. The shift is more than a procurement milestone, it marks a genuine technological transition, on par with the arrival of turbines and guided missiles. Dragonfire isn't just a new weapon, it's a complete rethink of how a modern warship defends itself, especially against threats shaping today's naval battles. The reason the MOD has pressed the accelerator is straightforward. Economics, magazines and the reality of combat operations. Since 2023, the Royal Navy has been embroiled in real-world combat in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. Ships like HMS Diamond and HMS Richmond have been intercepting Iranian-designed one-way attack drones and anti-ship missiles. The Sea Viper system has performed superbly reinforcing why the Type 45 is regarded as one of the best air defence destroyers in the world. But the conflict has exposed two brutal truths. First, the cost imbalance is ridiculous. An Asta-30 missile costs anywhere between £1 and £2 million. The drone it shoots down could cost as little as £10,000. You win the engagement, but you lose financially every time. And if an enemy can throw dozens or even hundreds of cheap drones at you, the maths become unsustainable. Second, the missile magazine is finite. Even with the upgrade to 72 total missiles, thanks to the new Sea Scepter mushroom farm, a Type 45 can only carry so many rounds. In a large swarm attack, even the best destroyer in the world can empty its tubes rapidly. And once you're out of missiles, you must withdraw. Reloading a VLS at sea simply isn't possible. This is the strategic defence problem the Dragonfire resolves. The laser has no traditional magazine. Its ammunition is electricity. As long as a ship has the fuel to run the engines and generators, the laser can fire continuously, shot after shot. And each engagement costs the price of a couple of beers. Rather than spending seven figures per intercept, the ship spends roughly a tenner. Missiles remain essential for long-range threats, but Dragonfire takes over the low-cost, high-volume work, allowing the expensive rounds to be saved for genuinely dangerous targets. At the heart of Dragonfire is a solid-state fibre laser developed by Kinetic. A single fibre laser can't deliver enough power, so Dragonfire uses coherent beam combining. Dozens of fibres are phase-aligned, match so precisely that their light waves merge into a single tightly focused beam. The result is a 50 kilowatt class weapon capable of burning through drones or disabling sensors at several kilometers. The approach is modular, add more fiber modules and the power can increase. This gives the Royal Navy a natural upgrade path for future ships like the Type 83 destroyer. Of course, generating the beam is only half the job. You also need to keep it locked on target for long enough to cause damage. Leonardo UK's turret achieves this with precision stability, compensating for ship movement, target manoeuvres and atmospheric turbulence. The MOD claims that it can hit a £1 coin from one kilometre away. And then comes the brain, MBDA's tracking and engagement software. For the principal warfare officer, Dragonfire behaves like any other weapon. The system checks factors like humidity, range and line of sight, then offers a firing solution. To power a high energy laser, you need serious electrical power. Fortunately, the Type 45's integrated electric propulsion system makes it ideal, especially following the recent power improvement project. 
The two old generators are being replaced by three new, more powerful generators to support two unreliable gas turbine installations. The upgrade not only boosts the ship's power resilience, but also provides extra capacity needed for high energy weapons. Dragonfire is also expected to use a flywheel energy storage system. This acts as an electrical buffer, charging slowly, then releasing stored energy instantly when the laser fires. Without it, drawing 50 kilowatts in a split second could destabilize the ship's power grid. With it, the laser becomes a safe, reliable and repeatable weapon. As for where the system will sit, a 20 foot ISO container sited on the hangar roof has been suggested in video clips released by the development team. Four of the six Type 45s will receive the laser first, with the first installation targeted for 2027. HMS Dauntless and HMS Daring, having both completed their PIP upgrades, are leading contenders. HMS Dragon is also likely to be a contender. After all, Dragonfire on Dragon is too good a headline to pass up. What Dragonfire adds to the fleet is a new defensive layer. Right now, the Royal Navy actively fights threats with a tiered system. Aster 30 for long range intercepts, Aster 15 or Sea Scepter for medium range strikes, then the 4.5 inch main gun, then close in weapon systems, and finally the 30mm cannons for close in defence. Dragonfire sits neatly between the missile layers and the gun layers. It's fast, precise and extremely cheap to fire. In practical terms, it means a destroyer can burn down hostile drones, loitering munitions or small craft without touching its missile stock, saving those expensive asters for supersonic or ballistic threats. But lasers aren't magic, they have limitations. Weather is a big one. Heavy rain, fog, mist or sea spray all reduce range and effectiveness. In a rough North Atlantic winter, Dragonfire will be largely ineffective. But then again, how easy would it be to operate a small drone in these conditions? In the Red Sea or Eastern Mediterranean, the very places where drone threats are the most intense, the conditions are often perfect for Dragonfire. The system is also line of sight only. It can't shoot over the horizon, so while it's superb for short range defence, missiles remain the only option for long range or complex engagements. Still, limitations don't undermine the value. Beyond the immediate tactical benefits, Dragonfire is a major industrial story. Instead of buying a foreign system, the UK has retained sovereign capability. That gives the UK a real export advantage. Nations like Australia, Japan and Italy have expressed interest in a naval laser system. Being first in Europe to field a fully integrated high energy laser puts Britain at the front of a rapidly emerging global market. And Dragonfire is only phase one. Once a system is proven at sea, future versions could appear on the Type 26 and Type 31 frigates. The British Army has already trialled similar technologies on land vertels. The RAF is exploring directed energy options for the Tempest 6th generation fighter. Meanwhile, radio frequency directed energy weapons, similar to microwave cannons, are being explored under Project E-Link. If Dragonfire is a precision sniper, RF systems are a shotgun for disabling entire swarms of drones at once. Across all three services, directed energy is moving from experiment to mainstream capability. Fitting Dragonfire to the Type 45 fundamentally changes the economics of naval warfare. It restores the balance between the cost of attack and the cost of defence, and it gives Royal Navy captains something priceless, confidence that ammunition won't run out in a sustained drone attack. Dragonfire isn't the future anymore, it's the present, and it marks the beginning of a new chapter in how the Royal Navy fights at sea. We're watching the very first steps of a new era in naval warfare, but how big a leap do you think Dragonfire really is? Share your take in the comments. 
Thanks for watching.